Hello there, welcome to the GCSE revision video. Here we're looking at direct and indirect proportion. So uh, let's do, just do a brief overview of this topic and then we'll get on to some past paper questions. So if two variables are directly or indirectly proportional to each other, then you can make an equation that links the two variables that will involve a scale factor of proportion. And we usually use the letter K to represent that uh, scale factor of proportion. So if a statement says in a question that y and x are directly proportional, then we can create this equation. And this is what um, the topic is involving a lot. It's involved um, reading the context of a question, reading some words, and then creating your own formula from the sentences. So if it says y and x are directly proportional, then you can create a formula that says y equals k times x, where k is a scale factor of that proportion. And the letters can always be replaced with different letters. It's not always going to be Y and X, um, but it generally won't involve the K. So, so use K as your scale factor of proportion. And it won't just be this sort of basic sentence here. Let's go through a few other different examples. It might be Y is directly proportional to the square of X. So in that case, we need to square X. It's not square rooting. It doesn't say the word root in there. That would, uh, if it said the word root, you would square root, but this just says squared. And that is k times x squared, just squaring the x, not squaring the k. The k is just a normal k. So we'll look at a few other examples. y is directly proportional to the cube of x. So again, the formula is y equals k times x cubed. Just the x being cubed, not the k. Another example would be y is directly proportional to the square root of x. Now in this case, it's square root. Be careful when you see the word root, it is now a square root. And the k will always be outside of any squaring or square rooting. It's just a normal k at the front of your formula. And remember that y and x can be replaced with any sort of different letters that the examiner chooses. Okay, y is directly proportional to the cube root of x. That is what this formula here would look like. Make sure that 3 is nice and tiny to represent that it's the cube root of x. Okay, and then we move on to this keyword of inversely proportional. That's when we start to create fractions. So K will always be on the top of a fraction. And then when you see the word inversely, that will mean create a fraction with K on the top and X on the bottom. Or it could be inversely proportional to the square of X. So in that case, inversely means create the fraction. And then the square of X means square X. So it's y equals k over x squared. Or it could be the cube of x, like this formula here. y is inversely proportional to the cube of x. y equals k over x cubed, it could be. Or maybe even the square root of x, such as this formula here. And k will always appear on the top of your fraction. Or maybe even, I think, the final one we've got to go through. y is inversely proportional to the cube root of x such as in this formula here. So it could be any variety of those. It won't just involve the letters Y and X even. It will involve different letters um, to create your formula. Let's get started on some past paper questions then. So here's the first one. Pause the video and give this question a go. OK, so let's go through this question together. It's really important that at each stage you pause the video and give the question a go. That means that when I go through the answer, it will mean more to you because you'll have seen what to do um, and given yourself a good go at the question. So let's read the first sentence. First sentence says P is directly proportional to the R cubed. So that means we can create a formula P equals K because that's the scale factor times r cubed and that only the r is being cubed not the k okay and then we're told some information about p and r to work out what the scale factor is when p is 343 r is 3.5 so what i'm now going to do is i'm now going to work out what the scale factor is the first thing I'm going to do is cube 3.5 on the right hand side. 3.5 cubed is 42.875. 
equals k times 42.875. Now to work out this k value, it's k multiplied by 42.875, so I'm going to divide by 42.875 to the other side. So 343 divided by 42.875, and I get 8. 8 is my scale factor. So what's the question? Find a formula for P in terms of R. So the answer is P equals 8R cubed. I've worked out what that scale factor of proportion is. It's uh, 8. So I'm now going to rewrite this formula here, but with K equals 8 in it. So here we are. That's the final answer. Okay, so there we are. That's, that's the answer to that question. Let's now move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this question a go. Okay, let's get started here. So P is directly proportional to the cube of Q. That's actually the same formula that we had in the last question. P equals K for the scale factor of proportion, cube of Q. So it's going to be Q cubed. And then again, it gives us some information to work out what the scale factor is. Uh, P is 1350 times equals K times 15 cubed. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is work out what K is. So 15 cubed, 15 cubed is 3375. 1350 equals K times 3375 and then I'm going to divide that number onto the other side so 1350 divided by answer is 0 0.4 0 0.4 is my value for k so therefore the answer to part a is p equals 0 0.4 times q cubed and there we are that's the answer to part a Let's move on to part B. Find the value of P when Q is 20. So I'm going to use the same formula that I had from before. And I'm going to replace Q with 20. So it's going to be P equals 0.4 times 20 cubed. And remember, it's only the 20 that's going to be cubed. So it's going to be 0.4 times brackets 20 cubed close brackets, and I get 3,200. P equals 3,200. There we are, that's the answer for part B. These aren't too bad really, I don't think. Okay, let's move on to the next one then. So uh, here it is on the screen, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, let's get started. So let's first create the formula for part A. Y is directly proportional to the square root of X. So let's create the formula. Y equals K for the scale factor of proportion. And then it says the square root of X. So I'm going to put square root of X. The K is always going to remain outside of any squaring, cubing, cube rooting, square rooting, etc. Then it gives us some information to work out the scale factor. 4 is going to be replacing Y and uh, K times the square root of 49. Uh, the square root of 49, let's work it out, is 7, so it'd be 7k. And then divide by 7 on the other side, I get 4 sevenths. I'm not going to work that out as a decimal because I know it's a recurring one, so I'm just going to leave it as 4 sevenths. So the answer to part A is y equals 4 sevenths times the q square root of x. And there we are, that's the final answer. My final answer is the formula I created right at the start but with my new value of k substituting in. Moving on to part b, calculate the value of x when y is 12. Okay, so I'm going to take the formula, uh, y equals 4 sevenths times the square root of x, and replace y with 12. So 12 equals 4 sevenths times the square root of x. So let's now work out what this is here. I'm going to do 12, I'm going to multiply the 7 onto the other side first. I'm going to do this in a few stages. 
12 times 7 is 84. I'm just going to check that on the calculator. Yeah, 84. And I still have the 4 on this side. Now I'm going to divide by 4. That would give me 21. Yeah, divide by 4. 21 equals x. Square root of x. And then the next thing I need to do is get rid of the square root. How do you inverse a square root? You square both sides. So 21 squared. 21 squared is 441. So 441 equals x. And there we are. That's the answer to part b. Let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so f is inversely proportional to the square of x. Let's write out the formula first. So it's going to be f equals k for the scale factor square of x. So that's going to be x squared. Find a formula in terms of x. Okay, yeah, let's substitute these um, values in. So it's going to be 0 0.8 equals k times 5 squared. 5 squared is 25. And then I'm going to divide that onto the other side. So 0 0.8 divided by 25 is 0 0.032. Scale factor is a little bit complicated, but yeah, this is the answer. So f equals 0.032 x squared. Lovely, there we are. That's the, that's the answer for part A. Moving on to part B, find the positive value of x when f is 320. So I'm going to take the formula that we had from before, 0.032x squared, and find and substitute uh, f for 320. Okay, so I'm now going to move the 0 0.032 onto the other side. So 320 divided by 0 0.032, and I get 10,000. Equals x squared. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to square root both sides, and if I square root both sides, I get 100 as my value for x. And just the positive uh, square root, you, you would actually, if you solve this equation, get minus 100 as a solution as well, but it does say the positive value of x being 320. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, Q is inversely proportional to T squared. Okay, this is the first question we've seen in this video where we've got an we've got an inverse. That means create a fraction. So in this case, it's going to be Q equals K over T squared. So whenever you see the word inverse in your in your um, sentence to create the formula, you need to create a fraction. K will always be on the top, and then whatever um, your your piece of algebra is that will go on the bottom. Okay, let's substitute in the values to work out what that k value is. So 320 equals k divided by 0 0.5 squared. First, I'm going to work out what 0 0.5 squared is. 0 0.5 squared is 0 0.25. And then I'm going to multiply it onto the other side because at the moment k is dividing by it. So I'm now going to multiply by 0 0.25 onto the other side. So times 320, I get 80. So 80 is my k value. So therefore, the formula is q equals 80 divided by t squared. Oh, and that's just the final answer. Okay, so we don't need to do any more than that. We don't need to work out Q or T for any reason. So there we are. That's the final answer for this question. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go.
Okay, so in this question here, it doesn't say inverse. So we're not going to create a fraction. We're just going to go direct. Um, so a equals k times x squared. Then let's substitute in these values to work out what that scale factor is. So 480 equals k times 5 squared. 5 squared is two, so it is, uh, 25, so it's 25k. And I'm going to divide 25 to the other side. 480 divided by 25, I get 19.2. So k equals 19.2. So the formula is a equals 19.2x squared. Right, then we need to find the value of a when x is 1.5. So my formula is 19.2x squared. Substitute in 1.5. Okay, so it's just 1.5 being squared, so it's going to be 19.2 times 1.5 in brackets squared, and I get 43.2. Lovely, there we are, that's the answer for that question now. Okay, let's move on to the next. Okay, so let's move on to this question here then, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so in this question here, we have a matching up the graph sort of question here. Now, you may not have seen all of these graphs before, uh, but let me show you what the answers are to this question here. So f of x is inversely proportional to x. That would be graph B because it looks like a 1 over x graph. This graph here looks something like y equals 1 over x, and that's an inverse proportion f of x is a trigonometric graph. Let's come back to that later. Uh, let's do the direct proportion one. Directly proportional to the square root of x. Well, this graph here looks very similar to y equals the square root of x. So c is going to be the bottom one here. Now, you may not have seen the other two. Let me show you what the answers are. Um, the trigonometric function is this one up here. Graph a, that's a sine graph. And the graph D is the exponential function. Don't worry if you haven't seen those yet. Um, the, the, the proportion ones, B, this was the inverse proportion, and this was the proportion to the square root of X. Okay, let's move on to the next one then. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, let's get started on this one here. So y is inversely proportional to the square of x. So let's make the formula. y equals k, it says inverse, so I need a fraction, the square of x, so x squared. Let's work out what k is. So substitute in y equals 8 and x equals 2.5. 2.5 will need to be squared. Let's work out what 2.5 squared is. 2.5 squared is 6.25 so 8 equals k over 6.25 and then multiply that on the other side so times 8 and i get 50 so 50 is my value for k so the formula is y equals 50 over x squared now we need to find the negative value of x when y is 8 over 9. So, okay, let's substitute in 8 over 9 for y. And at this point, I've got an equation with fractions on both sides. So I'm going to cross multiply here. So the x squared is going to multiply to the left hand side, and the 9 is going to multiply to the right hand side. Divide by 8 now. So x squared equals 450 divided by 8. And let's calculate that on the calculator. 450 divided by 8 is 56.25. So therefore, x is going to be plus or minus the square root of 56.25, which is 7.5. But the question here says find the negative value of x. So therefore final answer here is x equals minus 7.5. And there we are, that's the answer for this question here. Okay, let's move on to the next one then. So pause the video and give this one a go.
Okay, so in this question here, let's read the first sentence. D, so D is inversely proportional, so K divided by C. Now, nothing's happening to C here. It's not being squared. It's not being square rooted. Nothing's happening. It's just bog standard C on the bottom, so K divided by C. Let's work out what K is by substituting in these two numbers. 25 equals K divided by 280. To work out K, let's multiply both sides by 280. So 25 times 280, that gives me 7,000 equals K. So therefore the formula is D equals 7,000 divided by C. Okay, find the value of D when C is 350. So D equals 7,000 divided by C, which I want to be 350. Okay, so divide that by 350 and we get 20. So the answer for D is 20 in this question. Okay, let's move on to the next one then. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, let's move, uh, let's have a go at this question here. So y is equal to inverse proportion. So that's k over x. And nothing's happening to x here. Let's work out k by substituting in the values. 36 equals k over 1.5. So to work out K, I'm going to multiply 1.5 onto the other side because it's being divided at the moment. So 36 times 1.5 gives me 54. So 54 equals K. So the formula is going to be Y equals 54 over X. Love it. And once I've worked that out, I can work out the next part. Find the value of Y when X is 6. So y equals 54 divided by 6, and I'm pretty sure that's 9, but I'm just going to check in my calculator. I don't want to make any mistakes on the video. Yeah, 9. Excellent. So there we are. That's the final answer. Right, good. It feels like we're doing quite well at this now. Let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, let's have a go at this question here then. P is directly proportional to the cube of Q or Q cubed. So let's write the formula down. P equals K times Q cubed. Let's work out K by substituting in these values. 270 equals K times 7.5 cubed. And let's first work out what 7.5 cubed is. 7.5 cubed is... Uh, let me write this down, 421.875 is the answer to 7.5 cubed. Now I'm going to divide that to the other side, so 270 divided by answer, that gives me 0 0.64, so K equals 0 0.64. So the formula is P equals 0.64 Q cubed. Okay, moving on to part B now. Work out the positive value of Q when P is equal to Q. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to say P equals Q. But I also know that P is equal to this formula here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace P with this expression here. So 0.64 Q cubed equals Q. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to, uh, what's the best way of explaining this? Um, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to um, move the Q onto the other side. I think that'd be the best way of explaining it. So sub subtract Q onto both sides. Factorize Q, so 0.64 Q squared minus 1 equals 0. So now that I've factorized it, I've either got Q equals 0, 
which is not going to be one of the answers, it says positive value, or 0.64q squared minus 1 equals 0. So I'm going to continue that up the top here. Okay, so I'm now going to try and solve this. So I'll move the 1 onto the other side. Then I'm going to divide by 0 0.64 onto the other side. So 1 divided by 0 0.64. 1 divided by 0 0.64 gives me 1.5625. 1 1.5625. And then we need to square root to get rid of that squared. So square root answer. And that gives me plus or minus 1.25. So we want the positive value, so final answer for part B is 1.25, positive 1.25. There we are, that's how you would solve this little quadratic here. You might not have got to that in the scheme of work yet, uh, but that is how you would solve the question. Okay, let's move on to the next question then. So uh, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so two small magnets attract each other with a force F newtons. F is inversely proportional to the square of the distance D between them. So let's start making this formula. So it says F is inversely, so I create a fraction, proportional, so I introduce that, that um, that's the scale factor K, and then the square of the distance D, so that's going to be D squared. Let's work out the constant of... Uh, of a scale factor, so substituting the values, 12 equals k over 2 squared. We know that 2 squared is 4. Multiply that to the other side, and I get 48 equals k. So therefore, the formula is f equals 48 over d squared. Lovely, there we are. That's the answer to part a. Work out the value of f when d is 5, no problemo. So take the formula and substitute in 5, so 5 squared. So on my calculator, I'm now going to do 48 divided by 25. 48 divided by 25, and I get 1.92. Okay, there we are, and that will be, um, we know that that's going to be newtons. And moving on to part c. Work out the value of d when f is 3. So let's substitute that into the formula. 3 will be f, and then it's going to be 48 over d squared. So I'm going to multiply the d squared on the other side. Divide by 3. And I think I get 16, but I don't want to make a mistake on the video, so I'm going to check on the calculator. Yes, 16. And then I'm going to square root. And mathematically, I get plus or minus 4, but it's a distance, so I can't really have a negative distance, so it's just going to be 4 centimetres. Lovely, there we are, that's the answer to that question there. Let's move on to the next one, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so let's make the formula, so let's read the question. D R is inversely proportional to the square of C. So R equals K over C squared. Let's substitute in the values now. 30 equals K over 4 squared. That's 16. Multiply that to the other side. 30 times 16 gives us 480. So 480 is the K value. So therefore the formula is R equals 480 divided by C squared. Excellent, there we are. Moving now on to part B, calculate the positive value of C when R is 1920. Okay, so let's take the formula. Substitute in 1920. And then we need to solve this. So I'm going to multiply the C squared onto the other side. So C squared then I'm going to divide by 1920. So let's do that on the calculator. 480 divided by 1920. That gives us 0 0.25. 
So then C is going to be plus or minus the square root of 0 0.25, which is 0 0.5. But the question asks for the positive value of C, so therefore C equals 0 0.5. Lovely, there we go, that's the answer to part B and for this question. Let's move on to the next one then, pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, this one is not too bad at all. Hopefully you've got at least good at this one, sort of one by now. So D is proportional to T squared. D equals K times T squared. There is the word inverse isn't in there, so it's just a straight line formula. Substitute the values in, 12.5 equals k times 5 squared, so that's going to be 25. Divide that onto the other side, and that's 0 0.5. So the formula is d equals 0 0.5 t squared. And there we are, that's the answer to part a. Moving on to part b, work out the value of d when t is 9. So d equals 0 0.5 times 9 squared. So let's do that on the calculator. 0 0.5 times 9 squared, and we get 40.5. Lovely, there we are. So that's the answer to that question there. Okay, let's have a go at the next one then. Pause the video and have a go at this question. Okay, so let's get started here. So let's write the formula down first. P equals inverse, so that's going to be a fraction, square of D, so that's going to be D squared. When P is 25.6, okay, 25.6, we get K over, and D is 1 over 8, and that's going to be squared. Okay, let's work out what 1 over 8 squared is. So 1 divided by 8 and then square that answer, and I get 25.6 equals k divided by, and the decimal is 0 0.015625. Let's multiply that now onto the other side, so times 25.6, and we get 0 0.4 when we multiply that onto the other side. So I've done 25.6 multiplied by that small decimal there, and got 0.4. So therefore, the formula is P equals 0.4 over D squared. Find a formula for P in terms of D, and now I'm not particularly, as a mathematician, happy with this answer here because I've got a decimal on top of a fraction. Now, we know that 0.4 is the same as 2 fifths. I'm still not completely happy with this as a final answer, so now I'm going to um, sort this out, and the way you can tidy this up is to do 2 over 5d squared. And as a mathematician, that is now a much better answer. So uh, don't mix up your decimals and your fractions, uh, and if you want to simplify a fraction like this, this is how you would do it. So d squared on the bottom. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer to that question there. And let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so let's get started. When a phot photograph is taken, the exposure time, T, is directly proportional to the square of the size, F, of the opening in the camera lens. When T equals 0.2, F equals 8. So let's write out the formula then. So... Uh, when a photograph is taken, the exposure time t, so t is the first letter that's mentioned, is directly proportional to the square, so that would be scale factor times f squared of the opening in the lens. Okay, let's now work out what this scale factor is. So 0 0.02 equals k times 64 for 8 squared. Divide the 64 onto the other side, so 0 0.02 divided by 64, and that is a very small decimal number, 0 0.003125, and that is the value of k. So therefore the formula is t equals 
0.000325f squared. And there we are, that's the answer to part A. Calculate the value of f when t equals 0 0.0098. Okay, so let's use the formula, substituting in t to be that number. So 0 0.0098 equals 0.0003125f squared. Okay, let's divide the 0 0.0098 by the 0 0.0003125. So 0 0.0098 divided by answer button. And I got 31.36. So when you divide that, 31.36 is what you get. And then I'm going to square root that answer. And I get 5.6 as the F value. Now that's plus or minus because you've inversed a square, but it doesn't make sense for us to have a, a negative opening in the camera lens. So F is just positive. 5.6. Excellent, there we are. That was a tricky little decimal question there. Let's move on to the next one then. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, the pressure P of water leaving a cylindrical pipe is inversely proportional to the square of the radius R of the pipe. So let's start off this question then, so it's going to be P equals inverse proportion square of the radius, so R squared. Let's substitute the values in, 22.5 equals K over 2 squared. As that's 4, so that's times the other side by 4. 22.5 times 4 gives us 90, so 90 is our value for K. So therefore the formula is P equals 90 divided by R squared. And that's the answer to part A. Moving on to part B, calculate the value of P when R is 1.5. So P equals 90 divided by 1.5 squared. And I'll just substitute that straight into the calculator. 90 divided by brackets, 1.5 squared, close brackets, and I get 40. 40 is the answer for P there, and uh, we, haven't got a, we haven't got any units there. Moving on to question C, find the value of R when P is 10. So take the formula and substitute in 10. So 10 equals 90 over R squared, times the R squared on the other side, divide by 10, and you get R squared is 9. So therefore, r must be plus or minus 3, but it's the radius of a circle or a cylindrical pipe, so therefore it must be positive, r equals 3. And there we are, that's the answer for that question there. Let's now move on to the next one then, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so M is directly proportional to P cubed. So let's make the formula. M equals K times P cubed. When M is 128, so 128 equals K times 8 cubed. Let's work out what 8 cubed is first. 8 cubed is 512. 512k, and divide that then on the other side, 128 divided by 512 is 0.25. So therefore the formula is m equals 0.25p cubed. Okay, find the value of m when p is 5, so substitute that into the formula, 0.25 times 5 cubed, and you can type all of that in in one go, times 5 cubed, and you get 31.25. And there we are, that one's not too bad at all. Let's move on to the next one then, pause the video and have a go at this question.
Okay, let's get started here then. So P is directly proportional to the square of Q. So Q squared. Uh, when P is 180, K uh, and then we have 12 squared. 12 squared is 144, so let's put that in. And then we can divide that to the other side. So 180 divided by 144 is 1.25. So therefore the formula is P equals 1.25 Q squared. And moving on to the next part, find P when Q is 30. So 1.25 times 30 squared. So let's work that out on the calculator times 30 squared. And that gives us 1125. And there we are, that's the answer to that question there. Let's now move on to the next one, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, in this question here, it says P is inversely proportional to the square of Q. So let's write down that formula. P is inversely, so fraction, proportional to the square of Q. So it's Q squared. When Q is 2, P is 12.8. So let's substitute that in. 12.8 equals K over 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. If I now multiply that to the other side, 12.8 times 4. That gives me 51.2. So K is 51.2. So therefore the formula is P equals 51.2 over Q squared. And I'm going to leave it like that. Even though I don't like decimals on top of fractions, I will leave it like that. Moving on to part B. Find the value of P when Q is 8. So P equals 51.2 divided by 8 squared, divided by 8 squared, and we get 0 0.8. Lovely, there we are. So that's the answer to that question there. Let's now move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. So a particle moves from rest. The speed of the particle v, when moved, is a distance of x metres. v is proportional to the square root of x. Let's write down the formula then. v equals, v is proportional to the square root of x. So k times the square root of x. When v is 8, x is 25. Now we know the square root of 25 is 5, so I'm going to replace that and then divide through by 5 so 8 divided by 5 is 1.6 so 1.6 is our value for k so therefore the formula is v equals 1.6 times the square root of x moving on to part b now find the speed of the object as it has moved a distance of 56 0.25. So the distance is relating to x. So I need to substitute x in for 56.25. So v equals 1.6 times the square root of 56.25. Let's work out what the square root of 56.25 is first. Square root of 56.25 and that is 7.5. And now let's multiply it by the 1.6. Answer times 1.6 gives us 12. And the units for V is meters per second. There we are. That's the answer for that question there. Okay, then let's move on to this next question. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, the velocity v meters per second of a particle is proportional to the square root of its kinetic energy e joules. So let's write out the formula to start with. V equals proportional, uh, the word inverse isn't in there, so it's just a straight line formula, square root of its kinetic energy e. 
Let's substitute in the values to work out k. So 30 equals k times the square root of 64. Uh, we know the square root of 64 is 8, so that'll be 8k. Divide through by 8, 30 divided by 8 is 3.75. So 3.75 is our value for k. So the formula is therefore v equals 3.75 times the square root of e. Okay, find the value of v when e is 400. So v equals 3.75 times the square root of 400. Let's work out what the square root of 400 is first. And it's 20, I thought so. And now let's multiply this by 3.75. And we get 75 as the answer. Do we have a unit? Yeah, meters per second. So meters per second. Lovely, there we are. That's the answer to that question there. Let's now move on to the next one. Pause the video and give this quite easy question a go. Okay, let's have a go at this question here then. So y is directly proportional to the cube of x. So y equals kx cubed. Substitute in the values, so 250 equals k times 10 cubed. 10 cubed is 1,000, so 1,000 k. Divide the thousands onto the other side and you get 0.25. So therefore the formula is y equals 0.25 x cubed. Lovely, moving on to part B, calculate the value of x when y is 54. So let's take the formula and substitute in y for the value 54. Okay, let's now divide by 0 0.25 on the other side. So 54 divided by 0 0.25 gives us 216. Now, if you can find it on your calculator, there's a cube root button somewhere. So uh, I think it will be shift in one of the cells on your calculator. Find that cube root button and it's going to be 216. It's going to go underneath. And if you found that, you get x equals 6. Lovely. There we are. That's the value of x for this question here. And let's move on to the next one. Lovely. Pause the video and have a go at this question. Okay, v is inversely proportional to the square of t. So v equals inverse, so fraction, the square of t, t squared. When v is equal to 28, so substitute them in, we get t is 2.5, so 2.5 squared. Find the value of, uh, so let's work out what 2.5 squared is first. So 2.5 squared is 6.25 and let's multiply that onto the other side so times 28 gives us 175 so therefore the formula is v equals 175 over t squared lovely there we are moving on to part b work out the value of v when t equals 6.25. So let's substitute that in. 175 divided by 6.25 squared. Now try doing that all in one go in your calculator. Divided by brackets 6.25 squared, close brackets, and we get 4.48. Lovely, there we are. That's the answer to that question now. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, yes, right, we're getting to the tough end of the um, set of questions here. So uh, try it, this for question here. I might need to show you how to do this one before we have a go at a few of the others coming up. So pause the video and give this question a go. Okay, so D is directly proportional to the cube of N. So let's write out the formula. D equals k times the cube root, so no, not the cube root, just the cube of n, d equals k 
k times n cubed. Mary says that if n is doubled, the value of d is multiplied by 6. Mary is wrong. Explain why. Okay, what I'm now going to show you is that I'm going to now double n. I'm now going to be setting the n and doubling it. So the new value of d is going to be k times 2n cubed. Now the math that I'm now going to do is I'm now going to expand the brackets here. So when you expand brackets like this, you're going to be doing 2 cubed, which is 8, and then n cubed. And if I reorder my algebra here, it's going to be 8kn cubed. So if you compare what we had for d from before, and then when we doubled n, it's actually d uh, is multiplied by 8. d is multiplied by 8 instead. Because that is what 2 cubed was. So there we are. So in this question here, when we doubled n, we replaced n with 2n, and then we compared what we had from before, sorry, this is in the corner of the screen here, we compared what we had before and what we compared after. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. And so a similar one here, then pause the video and have a go at this question. Okay, so in this question here, a pendulum of length L has a time period t seconds. t is directly proportional to the square root of L. The length of the pendulum is then increased by 40%. So what we're going to do here, the length of the pendulum is L. So this is the old or before. Now I'm going to change L and increase it by 40%. Now if you increase something by 40%, you're timesing it by 1.4. So now I'm going to be replacing L with 1.4L. Work out the percentage change in, in, in the time period here. So what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to expand the brackets. I'm now going to expand the square root of 1.4. What's the square root of 1.4? It is 1. Point, I'm going to put times there, 1.1832 dot, 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 times the square root of L still. So I'm, I've squared the 1.4, square root of the 1.4. So therefore, if I now tidy this up and put the number to the front, I get 1.18k times the square root of L. So therefore, the increase was 18%, increase of 18%. Okay, let me just check I've done that right. Uh, so the pendulum of length L, uh, pendulum has, the length of the pendulum is increased by 40%. Yeah, exactly. Look at the percentage change of the time period. Yeah, that's exactly it. So this is from our old to our new, we changed L for 1.4 L because we increased it by 40%. We expanded the brackets of the square root of 1.4 and lovely, we got 18% increase. Lovely, let's move on to the next question then. Oh, one with algebra in now. So we really are at the tough end of the questions. Now pause the video, give this question a go. Okay, let's give this question a go then. So we've got a formula for y equals the inverse of x cubed. So uh, proportional. Uh, let's substitute in y and x. So that'll be 44 equals k over a cubed. So it's times by a cubed onto the other side. 44a cubed equals k. And well, that's as best as we can do, really. So that the formula is now going to be y equals 44a cubed over x cubed. Okay, so the formula is 44a cubed over x cubed. Show that y equals 5.5 when x equals 2a. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace x with 2a and show that it comes out to be 5.5. So 
y equals 44a cubed over 2a cubed. So that 2 and the a need to be cubed. So let's expand the brackets. 44a cubed. If you expand the brackets properly here, 2 cubed is 8, and then a cubed is a. Now I can cancel out the a cubeds on the top and the bottom to leave me with just 44 over 8. And if you calculate 44 over 8, you get 5.5, which is exactly what we wanted to happen. So I've shown that y equals 5.5 when x equals 2a. Lovely, there we are. So that was a tricky little algebra one. Let's move on to the next question then. So, oh, tricky one here. We've got three variables in action here. Pause the video and give this one your best shot. Okay, so in this question here, we are told that uh, A is proportional to T squared. So A equals K times T squared, but also A is proportional to R cubed. Now we can't use the same letter K here. So I'm going to use the letter J. So J times R cubed. Uh, when T equals 47, R equals 0.25. Okay, so the best thing we can now do is set the two things here and here equal to each other because they both equal a. So therefore, k times t squared equals j times r cubed. And um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by k on the other side. So I get t squared equals j over k r cubed. Now the next thing I'm going to do, which seems like a bit of mathematical trickery, but it's absolutely fine, is I'm going to um, change j over k for a different letter because this is just representing some scale factors at the moment. So I'm going to change that for a new letter. Let's call the new letter a. So t squared equals a r cubed, where a is now the new scale factor that's representing j over k. And it's the scale factor between t squared and r cubed, which is different to the scale factors between a and t squared and a and r cubed. So now a is the scale factor between t squared and r cubed. When t is 47, so I'm going to have 47 squared on the left hand side, and I'm going to have 0.25 cubed on the right hand side. So I'm going to work out what, 0 point, what 47 squared is. 47 squared is 2209. It feels like it's going to come out to be a big number here. 0.25 cubed. 0.25 cubed is 0.015625. Now I need to divide that onto the other side. Ooh, wish me luck because I think this is going to be very big. 141376. Not, not too bad. 141376 is that scale factor a. So therefore, the formula that links the two things together, t squared, is 141376, and that's then r cubed. Okay, find the value of r when t is 365. So this is my formula down the bottom here. Let's now substitute in 365 for t. So 365 squared equals 141. 376 r cubed. So 365 squared is 133225. Let's now divide that number from the right onto the other side. So divide by 141, 141376. And I get r cubed equals 0 0.9422 dot, 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 dot. So now r, just on its own, 
And let's try and find that cube root button again. Is 0 0.98, uh, 0 0.980 to three significant figures. Lovely, there we are. That was a really tough question here then. I think the mathematical trickery of turning the two scale factors into a single scale factor was, was pretty difficult. Maybe you didn't uh, know to do that, but you can do that in future. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helps. Okay, let's move on to the next question then. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, we're matching up the graphs with the type of proportionality. So for the first one, y is proportional to x. That would be graph B. That's straightforward proportion. x squared, which graph looks like the x squared graph out of the three remaining. I think D. D looks like the x squared graph. The square root of x graph looks like A. And the 1 over x graph looks like C. So there we are. That's the answer there. Okay, let's move on to the next question then. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so this question is quite challenging. We've got y in terms of d squared and then d squared in terms of x squared. So I think we've got enough information here to work out both of the formulae and then we can work out y in terms of x. So on the first formula, it's going to be y equals inverse, so that's a fraction, k over d squared. And then when d equals 10, y equals 4, so 4 equals k over uh, 10 squared, which is 100. So I know that k is 400. So for this formula, it's going to be y equals k, no, not k, we now know that k is 400 over d squared. Okay, so that's the first formula. Let's work on the second formula now. d is directly proportional to x squared, so no fraction there. And it doesn't particularly matter that I'm using the same letter here, K. You could use a different letter if you wanted to, but I don't think it affects the question here. When X is 2, D is 24. So 24 equals uh, 2 squared is 4, so 4K. Four so therefore, K is 6. So therefore, the formula here is D equals 6X squared. So now what we need to do is write a formula for y in terms of x. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to substitute d into the y equation here. So it's going to become y equals 400 over, and instead of writing d squared, I'm now going to write 6x squared. And that will need squaring because d is being squared. So it's going to be a squared like that. We then need to expand the brackets, 400 over 36x to the power of 4. I then need to simplify my fraction as simple as I can, and I'm just going to type it straight into the calculator. Um, 400 divided by 36 is 100 over 9. So therefore, y equals 100 over 9x to the power of four. And there we are, that is the final answer for this question here. Quite a tricky one there, working on two formulae and then substituting one formula into another and simplifying your answer. Okay, let's have a go at the next one then, a very similar question here. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so let's work on both of these formulae then. So H is inversely proportional to P. So that's going to be H equals K over P. And nothing's going to happen to P. It's not square of P, square root of P, etc. Just P. When H is 10, P is 6. So it's going to be 6 on the bottom. So 60 is going to be my scale factor K here. So therefore the formula is H equals 60 over p. So that's my first formula. Moving on to the next sentence here, p is directly proportional to the square root of t. So 
no fraction here, just k times the square root of t. And when p is 6, so 6 equals k times the square root of 144. Uh, we all know that the square root of 144 is 12. Divide the 12 onto the other side and you get 0 0.5. So therefore the formula is p equals 0 0.5 times the square root of t. So that's our second formula. And what we now want is a formula for h in terms of t. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in the second formula into the first formula. So it's going to be h equals 60 divided by p, which is 0 0.5 times the square root of t. Now to simplify this, um, I don't want a decimal on the bottom here. What I'm going to do is um, to cancel out this 0 0.5, I'm going to times top and bottom by 2. And that will give me um, 120 over the square root of t. Another way of doing this would be to put in that into your calculator and then you would have worked out that that would also just give you 120. Either way, this here is our final answer. Find a formula for h in terms of t. There we are, that's our final answer. <clears throat> okay, and moving on to the next one then, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so the force of attraction, F newtons, between two magnets varies inversely as the square of the distance D between the two magnets. What happens to the force of attraction when the magnets, uh, between the magnets, when the distance between the magnets is doubled? Okay, this is going back to a question we did probably about 15 minutes ago in the video. So first of all, let's work out the formula. The force of attraction F between two magnets, so F equals is inversely, so it's a fraction, k over the square of the distance, so d squared. So this is in the, um, this is the old formula. And now, in the new formula, we're now going to double the distance between the magnets. So now I'm going to set d equal to 2d. So new formula, after the doubling of the um, distance, is f equals, let's start the formula again, f equals k over 2d squared. And if I expand those brackets, I'm going to get f equals k over 4d squared. And if I write this just slightly differently, I'll emphasize the point a little bit better. This is equal to a quarter times k over d squared. So you can see here from before, I'm now looking at this part here and this part here. The force of attraction is now a quarter of what it used to be. What it used to be was k over d squared, and now it's a quarter of it. So what happens to the force between the magnets when the distance is doubled? The force decreases... by a scale factor 4. Scale factor of a quarter, we could say, actually, probably be better. OK, when the, th when the magnets are 3 centimetres apart, the force of attraction between, the, uh, between them is 40 newtons. What is the force of attraction when they are 10 centimetres apart? Let's go to that formula that we started with, F equals K over D squared. Um, when the Distance is 3 centimetres, the force is 40 newtons. So let's substitute both of those values in. 3 squared is 9. Times that to the other side, I get 360 as my k value. So therefore, the formula is f equals 360 divided by d squared. Find the force of attraction when the distance is 10. So now f equals 360 divided by 10 squared, 10 squared is 100, so that's going to be 3.6 newtons. And there we are, that's the answer for that question there. And that's all we've got for this video. So hopefully you found that video helpful. There's been loads of direct and indirect proportion questions thrown at you there. Hopefully that's enough practice to get yourself super good. Um, and feel free to come back to this video in the future. <coughs> um, 
and then swat up on your on your direct and indirect proportion again in the future. But you always know this video is here. It's always on the website if you want to practice a little bit more on this topic. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful.